times the wicked prosper. And see that this nation is your people. Moshe also asked Hashem that he should return his pre divine presence and lead the Jewish people again. And Hashem answers him in verse 14. He said, my presence will go and provide you rest. Now we turn to page 507. Hashem also within uh, the answer explained to Moshe why do righteous suffer and why do wicked prosper. And Moshe saw that this was an opportune time and he pressed further and he said, page 507 verse 18, show me now your glory. He says, I want to see you. But Hashem said, I shall make all my goodness pass before you. But, in verse 20, you will not be able to see my face, for no human can see my face and live. And verse 23, you will see my back, but my face may not be seen. Hashem said to Moshe, you will see the back. The back represents after the fact. You will see my effect on history. But you cannot know what I'm thinking. You cannot see me until you leave your body. Only then you will reconnect with me and understand everything. And as to the answer, why do righteous suffer and uh, wicked prosper? He answered him in the middle of verse 19. I shall, fav I shall show favor to whom I choose to show favor and I shall show mercy to whom I choose to show mercy which basically means it's up to God to decide you cannot understand divine judgment why do righteous suffer because I said so why do wicked prosper because I said so ultimately only God knows we do have multiple answers why the righteous suffer and with those multiple answers we can basically answer every case but we don't know why a specific case happens only God knows now verse 34 the second tablets uh, chapter 34 verse 1 Hashem said to Moshe carve for yourself two stone tablets like the first ones and I shall inscribe on the tablets the words that were on the first tablets that you shattered. Page 509, verse 4. So Moshe carved out two stone tablets like the first ones. Moshe arose early in the morning and ascended to Mount Sinai. And now Hashem reveals his 13 attributes of mercy to Moshe. In verse 6, Hashem passed before him and proclaimed, Hashem, Hashem, God, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abundant in kindness and truth, preserver of kindness for thousands of generations, forgiver of iniquity, willful sin and error, and one who cleanses but doesn't cleanse completely, recalling the iniquity of parents upon children and grandchildren to the third and fourth generation if they do not change their ways. Now we turn to page 511. Moshe requests three things from Hashem. Verse 9, he said, If I have now found favor in your eyes, my Lord, let my Lord go among us. And Hashem agreed. The second, And you shall forgive our iniquity and error. Please forgive the Jews completely and give them the Torah again. Make them, their, make them your beloved nation. And Hashem agreed verse 3 uh, uh, the third thing make us your heritage and not only that Moshe also asked Hashem please rest your spirit upon the Jews and not upon the other nations that we should be unique and Hashem answered positively to all his requests verse 10 Hashem said behold I seal a covenant before your entire people I shall make distinctions such as have never been created in the entire world among all, among all the nations. Which means the Jews are going to be different than all other nations. You will find God only among the Jews. And therefore, 
any non-Jew who will want to connect to God, he will have an option to become a convert. Verse 12, some warnings. Be vigilant, lest you seal a covenant with the inhabitant of the land. Rather, verse 13, you shall break apart their altars, smash their pillars, and cut down their sacred trees. Verse 18, now we mention uh, some laws. You shall observe the festival of, of Matzot and some laws about Pesach. On page 513, some laws of firstborn. Every first issue of a womb is mine. First issue of an ox or sheep. Uh, if a first baby animal boy is born to ox, goats, or sheep, we give it to Kohen. Verse 20, the first issue of a donkey shall redeem with a lamb. If uh, a donkey that belongs to a Jew gives its first birth and it happens to be a boy, baby donkey, we exchange it for a baby lamb and we give the lamb to Kohen and we can keep the donkey. And another law, you shall redeem every firstborn of your sons. So if a human being, a Jew, has a firstborn baby, we redeem him with five silver coins from Kohen. And now we learn about uh, Shabbat, Shavuot, and Sukkot. Six days shall you work, and on the seventh day shall you desist. You shall desist from plowing and harvesting. Verse 22 speaks about Shavuot. You shall make the festival of weeks with the first offering of the wheat harvest. And then we speak about Sukkot. And the festival of the harvest shall be at the changing of the year. Three times a year, all your males shall appear before the Lord Hashem, the God of Israel. Now, at the end of the paragraph, we, we have uh, some more laws that conclude with the law not to cook meat in milk. And uh, someone is asking question, why do we repeat the commandment of Shabbat? And in fact, the commandment to keep Shabbat is um, mentioned many, many times during uh, in, in the, throughout the Torah because something that is very important is mentioned numerous times. And now we turn to page 515. The second tablets are given. Hashem said to Moshe, write these words for yourself, for according to these words have I sealed a covenant with you and Israel. He remained, Moshe remained there with Hashem for 40 days and 40 nights. This is the third period of, of 40 days. He did not eat bread and he did not drink water. And God wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Verse 29. When Moshe descended from the mountain with the two tablets of the testimony, Moshe did not know that the skin of his face had become radiant when he when God had spoken to him. Rays of light were shining from uh, Moshe's forehead. Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moshe and behold, the skin of his face had become radiant and they feared to approach him. Verse 33, Moshe finished speaking with them and placed a mask on his face. However, when Moshe would come before Hashem to speak with him, he would remove his mask until the, the, his departure. Then he would leave and tell the children of Israel whatever he had commanded. When the children of Israel saw Moshe's face, that Moshe's face had become radiant, Moshe put the mask back on his face until he came to speak with God. Moshe put the mask back on his face uh, in order not to embarrass the Jews because really when the Jewish people received the Torah they all became immortal they all became like angels and uh, when Moshe came down with the Ten Commandments and the Jewish people would receive it they would also have faces shining with spirituality however because they made the golden calf they lost it and now only Moshe has it and they, they when they see Moshe they're constantly reminded of their sin and they feel embarrassed and that is why Moshe covers his face. However, when he would teach them Torah, the words of God, he would uncover so that they benefit from the spiritual light that is shining upon them. This concludes Parshat Kitisa. 
Thank you for listening. Shabbat Shalom Umevorach.